get cool weather down here, but never, in, at least in the 50s, is very rare. And I think it was 53 that morning. And that cold weather, obviously, it triggers the, the kingfish. You know, they really seem to like it when it's cold. That's when you know you're going to have some kingfish bites. That's right. Kings are here. Dude, that's a good one. After a while, you were up, you know, getting way better action with the uh, sand ball than I was with live bait, so I went ahead and joined him. Trying to re ring, Pat. <laughs> I'm glad I took my beanie off. Simrads Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. Got enough layers? Dude, everything I own is on right now. All right. <laughs> what is the temperature right now? It was 52 degrees this morning on Duck Key. It lasts about three hours and it'll be over. Do you believe that? No, I saw, <laughs> I saw it on the truck driving up and I was like, What's the high today going to be? Oh, it'll be 70, no problem. Once you we, think? Yeah, the wind's going to let up. What are we going to fish for? Well, since you didn't come for dinner last night, I already got the boat all rigged up, so we're doing what I want to do. We're going to go uh, uh, try to catch some fish on a wreck, but we're not going to drift. We're gonna, I'm going to let you uh, set up the boat, and we're going to drop some sand balls, catch some live bait for chum, try to get the big kings or wahoo, the kite up with the goggle eye. We're going to just Anchor down and let the cold front go by, and then we'll uh, go back in, maybe catch some ballyhoos and look for a sail. The things people do for a mutton snapper, Scott. Things that two, the two of us do. <laughs> uh. That chum method, it, it, you know, if you haven't seen it before, the reason it's, it's so uh, productive is you're just weighting the chum with the sand and taking it down to the bottom and creating a cloud of chum and and like almost like activity happens whenever like a shark feeds or a stingray feeds they kick up the sand and those mutton snappers like and all the fish like to go in there and get the scraps right so you're just emulating that and uh, you know like you said we haven't done it here um, and it was cool to give it a shot we didn't you know by no means did, did we uh, uh, set the world on fire but for the day we had we had plenty of action god i'm gonna put this little jig head on here and Put a uh, little piece of bonita and just drift it back. Get started like that? Yeah, see if there ain't a mutton snapper that wants to eat some dead bait. All right. I'm going to throw a cigar minute out until he gets clipped off on mono. On the, on the surface? Yeah. Y'all been catching quite a few kings? Yes, nice ones too, actually. I'll sacrifice one. There's my bite. What you got, buddy? I don't know. I haven't got my, my wire rig out yet. Now I gotta figure out whether I'm gonna fish with wire or join you. Didn't even put a sand ball down yet, just one tester. I'm hoping it's not a shark. <laughs> it's actually really pleasant right now <laughs> for the conditions, you know? Uh-huh. You know, I was expecting it to lighten up a little bit more by now. Come on and float up here. That would be so nice. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't that big old mutton be nice? Or a gag grouper? Or a big old porgy? Is that a... Oh, that's Holy a cow! It's a Margate. That's a Margate, baby. That's a beautiful fish. Those Margates. That's the granddaddy of all grunts right there, Scotty. Yeah, but that's a, a whitest meat ever. Yeah, man. They call that the silver snapper. That is a beautiful fish. The old silver snapper. Hey, you know what? Come in. Wherever these are, there's plenty of mutton. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking already. That's a beautiful. 
fish. <laughs> Grunt on steroids, baby. That's him right there, Mark buddy. Gate. Boy, great, great fish. Ain't a mark on him either, man. Clean, pretty fish. Well, that'll start it off. There it is. Oh, listen, he's grunting. Uh, uh, like a crab crusher. Do it again. All right. Do it later. That is a big, nice. Don't catch those every day. All right. Let me get this wire around. He's floating. Way to go, baby. Oh, that's a nice one, too. Oh, that's a beauty. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Simrad, 75 years of innovation in marine electronics. BioEsk Solutions, clean, disinfect, protect. Waypoint TV, the destination for outdoor entertainment. Yamaha, reliability starts here. And by Ameritrail Trailers. Bubba, Golden Boat Lifts. Iowa, Rodan Marine Systems, and by Yeti. We get cool weather down here, but never, in, at least in the 50s, is very rare. And I think it was 53 that morning. But um, once you add the boat ride with that, it really kind of changes and drops it down to a little bit colder than that. And that cold weather, obviously, it triggers, at least it seems, for me, in, in, in the history, it, it, the kingfish. You know, they really seem to like it when it's cold. That's when you know you're gonna have some kingfish bites. This the first sand ball going down? No. Oh, that last one was sand? Yeah. Oh, I thought you just went naked. No, no, I went to the sand on it. All right, I wonder how you got down there. We ended up at 135 feet. I've been so quiet, I've been re-rigging. Hey, slow Something and for steady. my smoker. When it's cold, I like to get that smoker rolling. Slow and steady wins the race, buddy, right here. That's awesome. Got some color. King mackerel. It's a nice kinger. You got a little pick gap? Take a few of those. You want to tail them, find me. Nothing like getting bit by a kingfish on a cold winter day. Good job, buddy. With that cold front rolling up on us and anchoring down, it didn't take very long. Or like you had mentioned earlier, the kingfish found us pretty quick. It was kind of tough to get a live bait down for me. All right. Sarucho. Keep them coming, baby. Boy, yeah, making blood. Making blood. All right. We got plenty of gray and silver. Let's get we some got pink. The gray. We got the gray and silver covered. Come on. Get some pink on there. All right, I'll drop that one down again. What I love about Scotty, he's got like four rods out right now, getting it done. All angles. Something about that cold, cold, cold weather really keeps those kingfish active. I don't know if it's the bait's a little lethargic and they can they can really be successful hunting, you know, on those reefs and wrecks, mm -hmm. but definitely the cold weather, I think a kingfish. It was right on time. Reline that one. That's right. Kings are here. Dude, that's a good one. What you got, buddy? It's, it's a, a water wahoo. fish. Wahoo? I wish. Another happy king, happy king. I'm gonna catch one more king, then I'm gonna drop us back to the wreck. Yeah, I like that. Coming down your way a little bit. Getting ready to get you back on your knees, son. I know what I'm doing on Saturday. Let's hear about the marinade. A little brown sugar, obviously. Brown sugar, water, salt, cup of rum, cayenne pepper. Black pepper. And you said a cup of rum? Yeah. It gives it a beautiful color. Look at those teeth.
Take him and put him in the box. The, you know, the beauty of just anchoring up, you have time to set up. You don't have to race, but race, get something ready before you get to the next drift. And our, our go-to setup is a very light spinning reel packed with braid and a leader specific to what we're after. I mean, I think you were using a, like a 30 pound braid with 25 pound fluorocarbon. I was using 30 pound braid with a 40 foot leader of 30 pound with a live bait. It's two, two spinning rods, covered everything. Holding it, cut. There's a billfish on wire. Another kingfish for the smoker? Yes, sir. I had a bunch. I didn't get it ready in time. I had a bunch of people come over. I just fried it. It's they, good. they thought they were eating snapper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cookie cutters. I like it. Oh, a little smaller. Grab him. Ice him. Next one's gonna be a Wahoo. That C deck's nice on the knees. Oh, yeah, it is. Like what you've seen so far? Well, you can see every episode of every season of Into the Blue for free. Go to waypointtv.com. Click Ways to Watch to learn how to download the app or watch on your smart TV. After a while, you were, uh, you know, getting way better action with the uh, sand ball than I was with live bait, so I went ahead and joined you, but instead of plunging down with the sand, I was doing it just with the chunk of meat coming down behind you. Now he knows he's hooked. Got to get my line through all that grass. Yeah, you're getting all the slack out of the way. I think we might be together. <laughs> I might have. I might just have the. Uh, might have me. Trap. Trap. Oh. That a fit? Yeah. Got the Goliath, bro. That's the <laughs> showstopper. Let's see what you're made of, Scott. No wreck. <laughs> the heck's he doing eating my chunk? Elephants eat peanuts. Double! At least you can't eat yours. Oh God, there's two of them down there. <laughs> they just kept swimming up the edge. I just monster bite it. I said, all right, we've got, we've got this double header muttons. And then that first run on the bottom didn't, didn't stop. <laughs> it just turned offshore and kept going. Jump. Does seem like it's coming up, doesn't it? Got us an eagle wreck. Peril. We could have been tangled up, but when yours was running, mine wasn't. When mine was running, yours wasn't. But we were tangled. No, it was together. <laughs> the, the lines were together. That's eh, on their shirt. <laughs> Why are they swimming together? Maybe they're giant cobias. Pair of bull sharks. Kids <laughs> going on it. <laughs> Coming up. Going down. Well, they're doing it all synchronized. I know. I know we're tangled, but it's done weird. Where that they're coming up to the surface. Oh, what a shake. You feel that? Not the re-rig, Cap. <laughs> I'm glad I took my beanie off. <laughs> heat it up. See, mine, mine didn't do that. Yellowfin tunas, baby.
Head shake. The weird thing is, is obviously, you know, you know the power of a few things. If one has power like that, it's the Goliath Grouper. Mm -hmm. But this thing was up on the top. Like, so you know that's not that. So then you say, okay, well, it's a shark, you know what I mean? Because right. there's sharks all over the place, or, you know, they're, they're part of it nowadays. They've been protected so much that yeah. you're gonna run into them. You can't, it's inevitable. But then the fact that, A, it never cut either one of our leaders, which were only 25 pound tests. Mm -hmm. And then, um, B, it never really stood and shook its head a whole lot like a shark would. This thing just headed straight south. That's really weird. We both have 25 pound leaders. <laughs> Oh, mine broke. I think he's going to change directions in a few minutes. Do you think? That's a lot of line out, bro. Now he's got his buddy swimming with him. <laughs> They're in cahoots. You want to straighten your leader out. I won't lose any sleep over that, Scott. That was just an odd fight, but. Unless it was the yellowfin tuna. But we'll never know. Scoped up, weird. Wasn't a black fan, I'll tell you. It was a pair of them. <laughs> they were a pair of them, and they were swimming very close together. And they're eating sandballs. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Scales, every degree of water. Hawks K Resort, find what lures you. West Marine. And by Battleborn Batteries. Costa Pro Series. Nikon. Killer Dog and by SpearOneKeyWest.com. Into the Blue is on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Give us a follow or subscribe and check out behind the scenes footage and wonderful photography posted daily. Lucky we were shooting for muttons, and the bycatch usually is a black grouper or a red grouper, which are out of season. And you were fortunate enough to catch two other species that weren't groupers. Yeah! Build it! Build it, they will come! You build that chum line! Trust the process. Well, we got a pretty big chum slip going. Oh, you only used 100 pounds. <laughs> Got him, Scotty. See, got a floater yet? Got a floater. All right. He is going to blow. It might be another lunka. Shiny, though. Porgy. Look at that porgy, bro. I'm catching the exotics today. That's crazy. Look at that freaking monster. That's, that's three of the biggest of each species. Dude, wow. that's, that's some white meat right there. <laughs> Wow, nice. Look at that old granddaddy. Boy, look at that orange on it. Cool. Porgy. Look at that thing. That's a, that's a big one. Pretty fish. Yeah, I appreciate you giving her heck. I mean, most people, I mean, no one went left the dock except for us that day. But you know, our time together is usually uh, limited, so you uh, gave it the old college try, and we uh, put dinner together. Got a lot more red meat in there. Had to wait for the wind to die down just a little bit. Yeah. Got to pull my jacket off. <laughs> Still got my beanie on, though. I bet you you're warm, too. I'm used to this 50 degrees in the Keys. So you had to go down a 25 pound leader to trick them. And then bump up your lead just a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's quite a, quite a puzzle. All the pieces are there. 
Come on, you're gonna get eaten by a shark. Keep that up. We don't say that word around here, buddy. You, you've caught hundreds, many thousands of muttons. When do you, when, when's that moment you know it's the mutton? Um, it's kind of like when you, that fight gives up. You know, that fish fights real hard at the beginning, but, but once that fish, there's 100% there's you know, certainty that it's a mutton or a grouper when, it, when that fight is, is done, you know, and he starts floating up. It's floating. Way to go, baby. Oh, that's a nice one, too. That's what we're talking about. That's what we want right there, buddy. <laughs> that is what we want. That's full grown. I want to pops jigs? <laughs> yeah, man. I want to pops his lead heads. You know it. It took a while, but we did get the target species, you know. We had to work our way through to it. But uh, when, that fine, when you finally get that big mutton in that deep water and you look down there and you see him start to float, nothing's better than that. Yeah, that's, that's what everybody's out there for. That'll make that box look pretty. It's getting right. Keep building it. Thank you, man. Pops half ounce. Love those big fish on these little spinners, man. <laughs> It's yours there, baby. No, take him up there. That's awesome. Good one. Just had to drop the boat back a little bit, work on our leader size, and then wait for the wind to quit blowing about 40. Oh, yeah. All right. You know, what I like to think of is it's as enjoyable as simple as you make it, right? So that was very simple. We kept it very simple. We went right out. We threw the anchor. We sat there, and we bent the pole. It was cold, uh, rough. And that's why it was pleasant to actually go out on a day that a lot of people, nobody actually went out except us. So that yeah. was cool. We had a thousand feet of line to work with. We started with 600, we had the 200 foot more. By that time, working out the back of the boat, that the swell wasn't as noticeable and we were able to, you know, put a nice day together. It's all about having the right, the right equipment and the, the right fishing buddy. That's all it is.